Welcome to the Pinch to Zoom podcast, the show where we zoom in on the latest tech news, products, and trends. I'm Stetson. I'm Gabe. And in this episode, we're talking about how the coronavirus is impacting tech and how tech is impacting the coronavirus. Uh, it's kind of a two-way street, lots of influence going both ways here, and uh, I think it's a, it's going to be a good episode. So first, Gabe, we're going to start off with your new quick news intro. Yes, we now actually have heard it officially, and reviews are in. Everyone is saying it is the best intro they've ever heard, right? It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. In yeah. fact, we're going to roll it for you right now so you can hear for yourself. All right, and first up in quick news is something that we actually mentioned in our last episode was the Canon R5. Uh, at that point, it was just rumors, but now the Canon EOS R5 is officially confirmed that it is a thing, but we still don't have a price or actual release date. However, if you don't know, this camera is pretty awesome. It has 8K video, 45 megapixel sensor, in-body stabilization, and a fully articulating screen. Uh, but like I said earlier, no availability or price. I would guess this would probably be somewhere between like 3500 and 4500 right? I, I would imagine so. But that's still, for 8K, that's still exciting That's for me. still incredible. I also think that might be overly optimistic, and this could be closer to like 5000 So We'll have to wait and find out. Uh, next up in quick news, Fujifilm announced their new X-T4 camera with some notable improvements over the X-T3 and now has five axis in-body image stabilization. It's got a flippy screen like Canon, improved battery, better ergonomics, refined button placement, and it's a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor that can shoot 4K at 60 and 120p at 240 frames per second, uh, which is pretty impressive in my opinion. Great recording specs. Starting price of just $16.99. Not $16.99. Oh yeah, this is $1,699. Uh, but still, for a, for a camera with those specs, I think it's pretty impressive. And they also launched uh, the Instax 11 Fuji uh, film camera. That's their, like, uh, you know, the printout instant camera. So a new one there for only $69. So that's a cheaper price if you like taking instant photos. Uh, you could also look to that. Uh, moving on to non-camera news, we have Panera launching an unlimited coffee subscription. What? Whoa. Get your yeah. caffeine fix there. That sounds crazy. Well, this is not really tech related, but it is in the sense that you have to sign up for the My Rewards, uh, like their app there and become a member. But for nine dollars a month, you can get coffee unlimited. Only like only restriction is once every two hours. So if you get coffee, you have to wait two more hours to go back and get more. Probably a good idea anyways. So you don't... <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be totally slammed with caffeine. I mean, maybe you do. Yeah. If you get it five times a month or four to five times a month, basically, you've broken even. So. I mean, I personally have never really gone to Panera just for coffee, but hey, if it's it's you know it's near your work area or on your way to work, it might be a good option for you. This also relates to our podcast where we talked about uh, the subscription models that we have in place and all kinds of services that really add up. So this could be one of them. It seems like a great deal, but it could just add more money onto your monthly total. But um, did, can... did we predict uh, that back then? I think we said pretty much everything would eventually be a subscription, right? Yeah, subscription life. So check that out. If you haven't already, it'll be in the show notes, maybe. Definitely. But in other subscription news, we have Walmart Plus. Wait, what? No, this isn't Walmart Plus something else. This is their new possibly subscription service uh, to compete with Amazon Prime. Now, as you know, Walmart is brick and mortar very much, so they're leveraging that with this $98 a year service, which would offer unlimited same-day groceries delivered to your house. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if we'll see that this year, but it's potentially a thing that could be useful to a lot of people, especially if you shop at groceries anyway at Walmart, you know, getting it delivered to your house rather than having to go out and shop and, you know, subscribing. All right, I want weekly this, 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 this delivered to my house. It's pretty nice, especially if they can compete with Amazon on price. It does sound interesting. And that's a great segue, Gabe, because Amazon actually announced their first Amazon Go grocery store. Again, this is the grocery store that is totally cashierless. You walk in, cameras and sensors in the ceiling track your behavior and track which items you're picking up. And then when you go to checkout, everything is automatically added to your cart and you just scan your phone and pay with your Amazon account. And you're good to go. That is really weird because you have Amazon moving into stores and Walmart moving into subscription. 
Right. And that almost like shipping, because really that's a shipping logistics thing is finding how to get all those groceries delivered in such a short time. Yeah, that is. So which one do you think is more exciting? Personally, I'm excited for the grocery store experience because you don't have to wait in lines and you can check out much faster. And what's exciting is Amazon is planning to license this cashierless system to other businesses. So we could see it in stores like Walmart or other grocery stores uh, like Whole Foods. I would probably think not Walmart. I feel like they're too much of competitors. But yeah, Whole Foods definitely because Amazon owns it or, you know, Hannaford's, Shaw's, I don't know, Market Basket, places like that potentially. I I look forward to it. I I think it'll streamline the checkout process, although you still will be ID'd if you're checking out any kind of booze. Uh, That is a shame. You can't have little kids running in and running out with booze quickly. Well, moving on to our next topic, our next news item here in quick news, we have phone news because, you know, Mobile World Congress was canceled. However, there's still phones that have to be released. So first up, we have a really awesome budget phone, the Motorola G Power and Moto G Stylus. Now, these are two different phones, a Moto G Power, $250. And for that price, you're getting three day battery life, which is just off the charts. That for a smartphone, that is huge. Yeah, that that is incredible. You're also getting a triple camera setup and then a hole punched uh, front camera that's 16 megapixels. So that's $250. That's the Moto G Power, obviously, because it gets a lot of battery life. Then the Moto G Stylus, named because it also includes a stylus, only has two day battery life, but also has a triple camera setup with a 48 megapixel camera. And yeah, that I just this is incredible. That's only $300. So I know you're a big advocate of buying used or like older phones that are like last year's models but this is a phone that you can get new that is very affordable and very competitive these seem like great budget smartphone options from motorola and i do really like their minimal uh, software design and experience so consider checking them out next up in quick news we have nokia considering a merger opportunity as reported by bloomberg why this is important is nokia actually owns 15.7 percent of the 5G market share. So this could be huge going forward. Nokia finding a company uh, to join hands with, join forces with, to build and deploy 5G networking, 5G, 5G infrastructure, and really bring the future of networking technology uh, to more marketplaces. So we'll have to see what happens. It is kind of uh, a more of a rumor right now, but it, I think it would make sense for them uh, going forward. Speaking of 5G, In more cell phone news, we have another new cell phone. It's the Sony Xperia Mark II. And this is notable because it's the first 5G phone from Sony. No availability and price, unfortunately. So who knows when we'll see this. But when it does make it to market, you can look for a triple rear camera setup that even though it's only uh, 12 megapixel sensors are a lot larger sensor size. So we'll hopefully have good low light quality. And then it has a 4K HDR screen and is 4K HDR video capable and also has Dolby Atmos sound uh, capabilities, which is just basically, you know, better sound quality. Speaking of Sony, uh, this year was actually a leap year. And, you know, it's funny. No, that was, we've been been doing good on segways so far, but that was a bit of a reach. Well, that was uh, a bit of a leap. A leap. Oh, man. There we go. You're segueing better than I am. No, but I wanted to bring it up because Sony (laughs) misidentified 2010 as a leap year. Uh, for PlayStation 3's internal clock, which caused widespread connectivity issues, error messages, and all kinds of other problems for PlayStation gamers. That was the segue I was going for. Of course, we also have tons of other companies, funny enough, having problems with the leap day in the leap year. Uh, Technology just, it wasn't coded to accommodate that extra day in the calendar year. And uh, we've had some wild things. In fact, fun fact for you, Microsoft Excel to this day miscalculates 1900 as a leap year in order to stay compatible with other erroneous programs so as someone who is a perfectionist and very ocd that is that is just making me cringe so much like the fact that they have to knowingly put out a mistake because so many other things have mistakes in them it's true and this could either impact performance on the leap day itself february 29th or later in the year december 31st where everything is just suddenly off. Um, and also, happy birthday to all of you Leap Day birthday people out there. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. You age at one-fourth the speed as all of us. I think what you would do is just throw a blowout party every four years. Yeah, right. Right? Like, go all out? That would be sick. Yeah, that's it for quick news. Uh, moving on, 
this is exciting. For the first time, we have our first real Go Review segment. Yeah, Gabe, do you want to explain the segment and what you had me go out and do for this Go Review? Well, Go Review is our really cleverly and creatively titled segment that we're now trying out where basically one of us asks the other to go review something. It could be anything from go review a new product, you know, uh, like say go review a new smartphone or go review a new service like TikTok, which I asked Destin to do. Uh, Or, you know, yeah, pretty much sky's the limit. It just has to be somewhat related to technology. And then the other person has two weeks to go review that product. So Stetson, in the last episode, I asked you to go review TikTok. How has it gone? What's your review? Well, for, I got the app and I actually made two accounts by accident because I forgot my password to one of them. Classic. For those okay, of you well, who... Okay, well, maybe your next thing you need to go review a password manager, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, their app, uh, they make it challenging to log in because they really want you to just create a new account. For those of you unfamiliar with TikTok, uh, this is a sort of a new social media platform that's taking off and it's like Instagram, but for video. I think that's the best way to describe it, where your profile, instead of having all your pictures, you have all your video clips and instead of scrolling through your feed and having uh, photos, you just kind of swipe through full screen vertical videos. And I think for me, TikTok is the definition of the social media vortex. The videos autoplay, they're short, either 15 seconds or 60 seconds, so you can burn through a lot of them really quickly and get tons of new content just thrown at you. Um, And I I found it very easily in the first couple of days to just get sucked down these tunnels. Right. It's like an hour has gone. Yeah. Would you say that's true? Like, do you find you, you spend like more time than you'd like or you just get trapped in the application? It's such, yeah, it's kind of like if if you just say like, if you're eating like, I don't know, like M&Ms, right? Just one more, just one more type thing or like chips, right? Because they're so small, these videos, they're like, oh, it's just, you know, just a, less than a minute. Like yeah, most of them just, are like 30 you seconds. You just flick through it and the next one's automatically playing. So then you're, you're sucked into the story. Oh, what happens next? And of course, they're edited to be like super engaging. Um, but yeah, so. And, it, and it's mainly the for you page is how, because they're differentiated by your, you have your ones that you're following those people and then the for you page is um could be people you're following but it's also what tiktok thinks you'll like it is true that yeah 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 so you basically have two feeds in there um and i guess like i was reflecting on this a little bit more and humans regardless of where you live in the world have different communication needs right so you have two audiences uh either like a private communication or more public communication And then you have different audience sizes. So you have like private one-on-one communication. That would be in the US like texting, SMS, things like that. You have small group communication. Uh, This could be like a Snapchat group chat or like an actual group chat. Um, And then you have kind of more public information. Um, Maybe that's Instagram. Maybe that is Twitter. And then you have like super broad public reach. Um, I I guess Twitter really falls into that category as well. And for me, TikTok is like, a super public reach for a video platform and it's also more personable and more raw i think than youtube like with youtube you go on youtube you see a thumbnail or you're doing a search how to repair your car's carburetor how to install a refrigerator how to do these different things and on tiktok you're just there for the entertainment uh the music that goes with a lot of the videos and i think i think they tapped into like an unmet personable public video communication platform that's that's my take i mean do you think that's true gabe does that does that make sense to you it's it's definitely because they um i know now they did actually just open it up so you can upload your own videos through uh your computer not just through your phone but it mainly most people on the app are filming it on their phone they're editing it right in the app which is actually if you were used to video editing software it's a bit different and it's a bit weird to get used to But it's actually a pretty creative way to deal with video editing on smartphones. So, yeah, I think that since most people are filming it right on their smartphones, not doing a ton of editing, you know, doing it to like for the fun, to follow a trend, to dance, learning dances, doing different things. Yeah, I think it's more personable. And there's also it's a generally I feel there's definitely areas that are negative, but it's generally a pretty positive community in that people are, you know, willing to try stuff and just put out a video. Rather than like, oh, I can only post the perfect Instagram post or, 
yeah, have to yeah. e- spend hours editing this YouTube video. I, a lot of, I guess there's common themes. One is just doing a meme, I want to say. So there was one where you could stand your broom up vertically and that became like a trending hashtag. And there were just a bunch of people trying this different, uh, or I guess trying this, I don't know, this challenge, the stand broom up challenge. And then there are other memes where you would like react to other people's TikToks and continue extending an item. Like one person would have a broom on their shoulder. The next person would have the end of that broom and have like a vacuum cleaner or doing something. And it yeah, was just- Let's just clarify for people who don't know. When you react to someone's TikTok, it basically puts you next to theirs. Uh, like it puts you, their original TikTok next to yours that you film. And then if you keep doing that over and over, it kind of creates this infinite line of ever like getting smaller TikToks. Basically. Yeah, it's um, yeah, you go split screen, and then the next one goes split screen with that split screen, and yeah. that would make the first image smaller and and so on. But I didn't even know you could react um until recently. But that reminds me of YouTube. Like on YouTube, you used to be able to post reaction videos. Reaction videos. That was a huge thing for channels to like gain subscribers and and gain views was the fact that they could post on a larger video a reaction. That's, I mean, it's so interesting they got rid of that. So I do think TikTok is meeting uh, some kind of communication needs as an interesting platform. I did not really find the editor super intuitive myself. Um, and I definitely personally feel that while the community tends to be nice, it is also kind of an interesting platform in terms of how people are using it. I think from what I've seen, what the algorithm has served me is uh, people kind of chasing viral content. And that has typically involved a lot of pranks. Uh, so I don't know how I feel about that because like one user, it's an interesting concept. What what this guy does is he will run up to someone. I, I'm unsure if it's staged or not. It might be staged, but... I think it's staged. You think so? Yes. I mean, it's just like a horrible, weird reaction. You, I honestly can't tell. And uh, he'll like grab a phone out of someone's hands, smash it on the ground or like pour, put it in his cup of coffee that he's holding and they'll flip out like someone oh, yeah. just definitely broke, definitely fake broke their device and then he'll like come out with a brand new one um so no, yeah these are these are all i'm guar- almost guaranteeing definitely fake or at least they're asking the person can, yeah no these no way that these are real and that's an interesting thing you bring up because a lot of people might think they're real on TikTok and it's the fact that TikTok is kind of seeing content that is already be- like it was like 5 years ago that everyone realized on YouTube that all pranksters are fake, right? Uh, but now you're having the same content come back onto TikTok or similar content. And whether it's that or whether it's, you know, um, just simple tech tips or YouTube, like, or business strategy tips are coming onto TikTok. But the people on TikTok, because they're mainly younger people, they're seeing this stuff for the first time and they're like, oh my God, this is incredible. Or, oh my God, I can't believe that's real. And it's it's kind of like you can basically take anything that was popular on YouTube in the past 15 years, upload it to TikTok in your own way, and boom, you got content that's going to go viral. That's that's a very interesting idea. And yeah, I guess, but Gabe, the I, one thing I want to do is I want to watch your, you you did upload one video. I, I was very did. Impressed. I made one TikTok and I was very much overwhelmed with the editor, but please go ahead and find it. You can find me anywhere Sorry. at Stetsdog. Um, so, yes. so I got it pulled up. I'm going to watch it right now. I haven't watched it. Uh, should I try or, and fill the dead air? Or? No, we're just going to. All right. It says, is in our is uh, is our Internet faster or slower? Oh, do you mean you are you for so you have a typo for oh, one in your God. TikTok. You meant to say, is your Internet faster or slower? And then you're doing the speed test and your Internet speed is. 148 megabytes per second. Mine's definitely slower. And so uh, that's nice. You're using their uh, new feature they added in, which was the ability to put questions in your TikTok. Um, yeah, I, I think it, that's a pretty good one. That's a nice one. I I definitely think that that, you know, showcases just how, you know, TikTok, it's kind of like Instagram stories. In a way, it's kind of like Vine. It's kind of like YouTube. It's, it's really a combination of all these different... And it's also kind of like Twitter because there's a lot of memes. So I... I personally like it a lot. Um, I I go in between using it because I usually I'll use it and then watch it for two hours and be like, geez, I have to stop this. This is not sustainable. This this um, is one of those apps where I feel like you need to use the built in time limit function in iOS or Android. Like if I didn't get some kind of timer or something going off, like 
David Dobrik. I just discovered him, and it's just like yeah. you just scroll through. You, you need to hire, actually timer is not enough. You need to hire someone to slap you. <laughs> it needs to auto uninstall. <laughs> yes, yeah. But what, what I was going to ask you is, do you see yourself using this in the future, either for just entertainment, watching it yourself, or well, for uh, social media here's, marketing? Here's what I will say: as kind of an independent creator, I'm trying to really grow my YouTube channel, my website, and right now I'm just not sure how to monetize TikTok or what the benefit could be. Like. Maybe it's a good platform to gain attention and direct people to my website, but you can't really have links and the description is very limited. So I'm not sure there. And I don't know what the sponsorship opportunities would look like on TikTok, like on Instagram. Uh, you know, there's tons of brand deals and you post these beautiful images. I'm just not really sure how TikTok will evolve. And for me personally, I think it's it's more beneficial for me to put my time elsewhere at the current moment. Um, but I think I can respect its creativity. I just personally think it's not for me, uh, considering how much how easy it is to just go into these uh, these social media vortexes. Uh, but yeah, that's I mean that's my take. That's my review. I would say um, check it out. I think it's good to to know what the latest apps are, but also consider being mindful with how you spend your time and. Uh, you want to make sure that is in alignment with uh, what your goals are and, and where you want to go. Mindfulness is never a good thing. Don't <laughs> think about it. Just... Mindless content consumption. Yeah. That's what makes money. That's we're content creators. We need mindless consumption, obviously. So yeah. Well, uh, that is your go review. Do you have something for me to go review in this next two week period? Yeah, Gabe. I think uh, there's a great product that I was thinking about that I would love your take on, and you seem like the person to to do this. And it is funny enough the Insta 360. Go or Insta 361 R because you don't have the go. But yeah, that I want your review of the action camera, your take, and uh, it sounded like you had all three action cameras at one point. You're being, you're being. I was expecting something much more sinister from you. Uh, you're being very kind in giving me something that a product I already own, product I've already been testing out a bunch. So I appreciate that. Um, maybe I'll have to take that into consideration with when I give you your next uh, thing to go review, but. Uh, yeah, I'll 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 get into testing it more and come up with some concrete feedback and insight that I can give on our next podcast. So perfect forward to that then. And now we should uh, go into the main the main topic. Yeah, the uh, the coronavirus tech debacle and what's going on there. Well, look, I mean, let's first start off. You've probably heard a lot about the coronavirus uh, from a lot of different you know medical experts, uh, people on the news, people who aren't medical experts, and we're definitely in that other category. We're also, we're both not medical experts, uh, not claiming to be that, and we're not even, uh, you know, financial experts. So we will be talking about, you know, how it's affecting the stock market and stuff. And we're not neither of those. What we're going to be focusing on, though, to put it back into our expertise area, is how the coronavirus is affected by tech and how tech is affecting the coronavirus. So yeah, I think we just should to just... Be, just to be just to be clear and preface it up front. I think we should uh, start off basically with like the biggest things we've seen from the coronavirus. And to me, that's actually been the cancellation of a lot of events and companies pulling out of events, wanting to reduce travel, keep their employees safe and healthy. Uh, the notable ones for me was, I guess, were Mobile World Congress. My friends just visited for PAX East and we had some companies pull out of that. But yeah, Mobile World Congress went from pretty much all the big companies pulling out to just a full-blown cancellation. and Well, the, the, the same thing also happened we talked about uh, in the last episode that the Canon T8i we thought would be announced at CP Plus in Japan. And that event, which is, a you know, this is like one of the biggest photography-related um, events in the world. You know, pretty much you get all the, like, big camera companies that are releasing major releases, and that got canceled too. And that was, like, I think first week of March supposed to be. So two huge tech events completely canceled and i there could be more you know it's it's hard to say where the virus is going Definitely, and, depend, depending on how long this goes on for right yeah and and that i think basically daisy chains into a whole influx of other scenarios like one plus could be that um let's say canon was anticipating to show off their um their new eos r5 maybe they needed more time to work on it wasn't ready to be presented in that kind of public space so now they get more time to work on it, and that could be a plus. But I think the big downside is you miss out on a lot of publicity for these new tech products, these new items. And I think currently there's a lot of supply chain slowdowns in China because, of course, many components are manufactured in China. 
And, uh, you know, if these poor workers are, are getting sick with the virus, then they're unable to work and the factories have to really slow down production or even stop altogether in some cases. That, that's true. We'll definitely see this affect, uh, you know, product release times as far as like, all right, we need, you know, we have a new release for, you know, say the iPhone 12. And if they, you know, Apple can't open up their factories or run them at, you know, peak capacity, maybe they have to either push back the release date or announcement date of the iPhone 12, or maybe they have to, you know, say, all right, it's limited pre-orders or stuff like that. I don't know. It's going to, it's definitely, you know, depending on how serious this is, it'll affect the availability of new products. And then also even the availability of current products. I know the Insta 360 one R actually speaking about that. uh, When I was able to get mine pretty much on time when I ordered, but people who ordered later than me have been starting to receive emails back from Insta 360, which is based out of China saying that uh, because of the coronavirus, their orders are going to be slowed down significantly um, and they, you know, they might be delayed and they, they can't really give a firm estimate of when they'll be delivered. That's, that's really hard too. I mean, for some customers, it's hard to tell what kind of creative space they're in. If they need an action camera, this slowdown could just persuade them to get something else like the GoPro Hero 8, like another great action camera that could suit their needs, uh, needs if they need the camera more immediately and they, they just can't wait for that. So it's, it's almost unfortunate, like companies having to do this, having to potentially issue refunds and that uh, could skew the their orders and how many actual units they need. But um, it's I think yeah, from, it's to be. Yeah. From a business standpoint, I think you're going to say it's definitely going to affect companies the most who manufacture products uh, in China initially, but then really anywhere. So companies who are you know making physical products rely on factory workers that are, you know, obviously people in close quarters and stuff like that, which are. You're going to shut down if there's any big um, pandemic. Uh, the tech companies it doesn't hurt, though, is online companies or streaming companies. Yeah. Like, what have we seen with this? Well, I mean, we've we've seen uh, a huge surge in uh, Netflix online streaming because obviously if people are staying home. What are you going to do if you're staying home? Like, uh, Netflix all yeah. day, every day. It's like, fi- finally, time to catch up on that season finale. Let me get caught up on this new show. Uh, let me start something new, you know, right? Perfect time to, right? to binge. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is Netflix might need to change is they need to start asking instead of are you are you still awake is like are you still okay like <laughs> you know are Remember you still to drink alive? Water. Yeah, have just, vitamin uh, wash C. your hands stuff yeah. like that. Uh, so you, know, you definitely streaming services, also potentially um, you know like Amazon Prime their delivery services that will be very uh, initially like in the U.S. I'm imagining people are you know wanting the deliveries more so they don't have to go out and shop and stuff, but that could also be affected eventually. Uh, if this, you know, it does reach pandemic level, uh, status for this and, you know, they have to start shutting down some transportation stuff. Yeah. It, you know, it is kind of hard. I mean, on one hand, you do have more consumer demand for some items, but on the other hand, uh, that demand could potentially put workers in danger. And that's, you know, something companies got to be mindful of and careful of. Um, and I know, I definitely appreciate getting my packages delivered, but especially in the case of a more serious disease and infection going around, like uh, that means a lot. And it, it is kind of uh, more risky for those individuals who are delivering all those packages and, and having to deal with that higher volume of, of orders. So I, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I also think obviously we, we, you know, going along with Netflix, YouTube, any of those other HBO, obviously those are all pretty much the same gaming I, I, as you know, we are big gamers, both of us. Uh, we do game all the time. <laughs> but we're, we're actually honestly, gaming right now. You can't tell, yeah. but we, we're gaming right now. Honestly, though, if if I was in a lockdown, I might be inclined to pick up gaming more, you know, to download some games to play because it's something that's interactive, which is, you know, something that you get in when you're going out into the world to do whatever you're doing. And this is kind of like something that could replace that potentially. What's also great about gaming is it's collaborative. Like you could be playing with your friends. You could be chatting with your friends, talking with your friends. Like just because everyone is at home doesn't mean you uh, you don't have to have social yeah, interaction. You, yeah, like you can't hang out in the real world. So let's go uh, play Call of Duty together and hang out while we shoot up some other players. You know? <laughs> yeah, right? real, it's, it's, real bonding opportunity. <laughs> Hey, it's, 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 you know, desperate times, desperate measures. Yeah, I actually, sure. I want to actually go through, um, I found some notes on bigger events that were canceled. So as I mentioned, we had Mobile World Congress, uh, Gabe, you mentioned the big uh, photo event in Japan. 
Facebook canceled their F8 Developer Summit, um, which is their huge. It's like WWDC, like Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference. I want to say for developers for Facebook, so that's pretty huge. They're claiming there may be delays in Oculus VR. Um, Apple said they're going to be missing their quarterly revenue. Uh, they actually shut down 42 stores in mainland China, um, and it's kind of unclear how the illness will impact their supply chain. Gabe, what do you what do you think about companies shutting down stores in China? Is that the right move? Does it make sense? Like they're basically uh, making it they're they're decreasing their revenue by doing that. Like they're stopping a lot of sales that uh well i I think it's a twofold thing okay okay so or maybe even threefold so first thing is if you have a lot of sick employees you know that's going to be hard for you to keep a store up and running at its you know at the you know the peak of efficiency and experience wise so that's number one two stores like especially apple stores are places where people come in a lot touch devices you know, are testing them out. Oh, let me try the new iPhone. Cough, cough, move on. Someone else comes in, touches it. Boom. That's a lot of spreading of germs, uh, both to the employees potentially or among customers. Uh, that's something you you might not want. And it's just better to say, all right, let's just cut our losses um, and n- not be involved with that. And thirdly, if, you know, products aren't being able to be manufactured and supply is decreasing, you're not really going to have the ability to stock all your shelves in these stores. So why bother even opening them potentially? That makes sense. The one thing I kind of wonder about is if people still get paid. Like I would imagine salaried employees, they still get their salary. But uh, this, I mean, anything that shuts down could be a problem for hourly workers, people on an hourly sal- uh, hourly wage, um, because suddenly their their source of income is shut off. And, you know, that's potentially uh important to them like a huge part of their livelihood so well that's that's i mean moving on i know you had a couple other things you wanted to talk about being shut down um but it's that was i think the people both the decrease in business revenue and the decrease in like you're basically getting the whole economy starting to slow down potentially because of this um and as a result we saw some huge declines in the the tech sector mainly because they were the one the stocks you know like apple tesla uh, Microsoft, they had seen huge gains this year. And so we saw, you know, the, a pretty big correction and it could dip into recession territory. And so I was thinking something interesting to talk about would be where people can actually look potentially to uh, keep, you know, keep putting money either into the market or into other places that can give them a decent return um, that might be, you know, taking advantage of tech technology and like where we've come, you know, and, you know, 20 years ago, It'd be like, oh, yeah, I guess look for bonds and stuff like that. But now in today's market, it's, you know, there's so many options out there because of online stuff that you can really, yeah, there's a whole host of features that people might not know about. Sure. I think that's a great idea. Um, I mean, like, I guess the first thing is, does it make sense to keep investing in the stock market? Like, is this something people should be doing? What I mean, what's your take? What what are, well, what again, are you again, doing? Again, preferencing that we're not financial advisors in any way, but for people basically the general consensus is for people who you know have 15 years or more until they're you know looking to retire it's still worth putting money into the market um maybe not it's not a good idea to go out and buy you know ten thousand dollars worth or five thousand whatever you know a huge amount of a certain stock but it's still a good idea to keep you know putting into your retirement fund uh putting into your general savings fund or whatever it is uh, and especially using like that's really easy today using stuff like, you know, robo advisors and stuff that you can just set to. All right. Deposit this much from my bank account every week, every other week, every month. And it will automatically do that for you, which makes it a lot more painless to you know, say, oh, no, I'm putting money in the market when it's down, you know, five percent. Uh, but it also just makes it just, you know, it's a piece of like it's out of your everyday thoughts so it just does it on its own and you don't have to worry yeah i think um what i would recommend or what you may consider is something called dollar cost averaging this is actually a great opportunity for that and the idea is you set up an auto deposit maybe it's once per week maybe it's once per month or something like that and it just automatically invests at that interval at a set amount that you that you set and what happens is as the stock drops in price yes you're you're losing value but your buying power suddenly increases. So if Apple is hypothetically at $100 and it drops to $50 and you have an auto deposit for $100 that will buy Apple, all of a sudden, instead of getting 
one share for $100, you can now buy two shares. And in theory, yes, the stock market uh, will, I mean, it clearly went down and maybe it'll either drop into a recession or maybe it'll recover. But when it does eventually recover, maybe in 10 years, maybe in 20 years, you will suddenly have so much more ownership in the company that you will see massive gains and or maybe not massive gains, but it's one way to yeah. mitigate the losses by essentially owning a greater percentage and buying more shares as the market is declining. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I just want to clarify, I think the average time period for a recession correction in the market like to come back is but like four to eight years, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on it, but yeah. probably not 20 years. Yeah, I was, I was putting it way out there. I mean, it'll yeah. definitely be up in 20 years. Like that's just how the economy and, and markets work. Like it grows over huge periods of time like that. Um, yep. So if you are thinking long term, like I'm, I'm young, I'm 22, thinking about retiring at 62. So uh, I think it 40 year time. Horizon, yeah, continuing much. to just auto invest, not even think about it. What um, do you use? Speaking of auto investing, what is the app or services you use? Yeah, for that? there there are many different platforms out there uh, to consider using for robo investing or auto investing. And just to clarify what that is, is basically um, when you're signing up for robo investors, uh, they're, they're advisors that provide automated algorithm driven investment services um, with little to no human intervention. And this makes it easy and accessible for many people uh, to use the services. And as a result, they're very inexpensive. There's very low fees, uh, again, making it just more accessible and allowing more people to get exposure to the market and invest their money in assets so they can grow. Um, again, plenty of options to consider. We have uh, options that include... Um, like there's, there's Wealthfront, Better yeah. Mint. There's SoFi has some out there. Seeing Elvest. Yeah, no, ev even now, Fidelity and Schwab, uh, the more traditional ones, they have, you know... Uh, robo investing sides of their platforms that can do for your retirement stuff yeah uh, so there's there's yeah definitely if you're into this google it and look it up but i mean i personally use betterment i i'm actually also using betterment to, yeah. to finally answer it's your a, question it's a pretty popular one one i think among uh people our ages because they have a really good app um and they're pretty low fees so yeah definitely yeah, yeah that's that's what i use i think i have a retirement account with them an ira roth ira and I have just a general like uh, investing fund that I put some money into too. I, I, what I like about them is you can have multiple funds. So I have one general investing. I also have a Roth IRA and I have my uh, Tesla Model 3 fund that is, um, well, it, it may not be doing so hot right Took now. Took a little hit now, but don't yeah, worry. Not not too worried about it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's why I use, I, I've really enjoyed it. Have you been enjoying your Betterment experiment, experience? I well the thing for me is I had to actually I deleted the app from my phone because it's the type like the whole point of it is that like you want to be able to just set it up and forget and having the app as a temptation oh to look how much am I, am I up am I down it's just I mean I like that the app is convenient and stuff but it's also like the whole point of it is that you shouldn't have to even use it on your phone because it should be so set and forget that you just all right I don't look at this, you know, for, all right, maybe six months later, I need to adjust how much I'm putting in weekly or add a little extra or stuff like that. But that was the main thing for me. But I definitely, it's a, it's a good, uh, good, good app, good service. Um, if you're looking for something that's free, no fees, you can go like for Robinhood and stuff and for other well, actual they're not, stock they're trading really platforms. A robo investor. But like, the, yeah, exactly. Just, though you're not going to get that robo investing. You're not going to get the AI balanced, um, you know, what portfolios and they're not going to be basing it like for us that are younger they're giving us a lot more in the stock market a lot less bonds but if you know our parents signed up or someone who was closer to retiring the uh, ratio of stocks and bonds would be a lot more towards bonds and more stable assets and less stocks you could also consider a retirement date fund which is a mutual fund so it's more actively managed by uh investors but it's a similar kind of concept where basically uh, the fund will adjust the asset allocation where you're younger, you can assume more risk. So maybe you'll have more stocks. And then as you grow older, you want to have less risk, hold on to the, the wealth you have and have grown. And so maybe you'll invest more in bonds, which are less risky. And um, those two platforms are, are pretty good for uh, mitigating risk, automating your investing, um, and basically kind of going through this this decline but Gabe like 
this, that's that's still that's still traditional investing and going into the stock market. Yeah, that's it's still also risky. Like you're getting yes. a lot more risk with these exposures with unpredictable events like the coronavirus coming in, causing a dramatic shift in the stock market. What are some other places people can invest their money uh, that may be safer or uh, that are different um, that may not be as impacted by events such as these? Okay, so starting at the the most safe, obviously. Banks are extremely safe, you know, FDIC insured up to usually like a million dollars. So you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, unless you think the U.S. government's going to go under. Uh, but obviously, it's not really like your average bank. If you go to your local bank or whatever, most savings accounts are giving like maybe 0.10 percent interest or something like that. I think it's that's the awful. Annual I mean, average. I think it, it's the, it's horrible. The rate of inflation, I think, is greater than the interest rate provided by banks. So over a 10-year period or one of my longer 20-year periods that I brought up earlier, I think you actually end up losing money. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. You don't generally want to leave a ton sitting in a bank account. But uh, with the advent of online-only savings accounts and banks, it actually is getting better because they can you know cut the cost of not having physical locations, not having tellers and all that stuff and increase the amount of people they offer their services to. So you have places like uh, this Goldman Sachs offers Marcus, and they offer uh, currently 1.7 uh, annual interest rate. Granted, that can go down and up, but comparing that to your local bank, that's like 10, 20 times higher than what they may be offering. So yeah, it's, I actually do have a Marcus account, and I'm amazed. I think like y- you make money. Like it's not a lot by any means, but well, don't I? I don't don't think that savings is making money. Well, just it's think just that it's, it's amazing to me, like how it adds up like it's way better than just letting it sit in um, a regular checking account where you literally get nothing like if you need that money put it in one of these high yield savings accounts and all of a sudden uh, you get a little extra something like maybe you get something that can cover a free coffee or whatever like it it just helps out it's basically like instead of putting it under your mattress you're putting it in a place that is really secure and also uh it's like your mattress if, you know, on your it was your couch mattress and p- when people sat down they'd accidentally, you know, change or drop out of their pockets as well and fall into your little savings. <laughs> I, I like that analogy. Pile of cash. That's clever. That's really clever. And that's what you that's what you gain. I mean, yeah, it's not going to be much, you know, grant like if you have $1000 in the account, that's, you know, 1.7 is only what? Literally $10.70. I think yeah. it's a, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So no, oh, okay, $17, sorry. Either way, you're not it's not you're not going to be making money, but it's better than, you know, a sharp stick in the eye as they say. So, that's that's as far as like tech uh related, you know, st- pretty stable um ways to, you know, still get a decent return. That's the most safe, most backed up. Going up a notch uh is then we go into bonds. This is and slightly increasing your risk slightly. Yes. Bonds have been around for a long long time. But now uh, with, you know, technology, there's companies out there that are able to do like basically micro bonds. So instead of offering a bond for like a thousand dollars or so, there's companies out there specifically, I think we're both thinking of this company worthy uh, and they sell bonds for ten dollars each, which basically, even though bonds usually have a time period that you are, you got to buy it and then, you know, three years later sell or 10 years later or whatever. That's, it that's is. usually the big negative. Like you're buying yes. a government bond or a municipal bond for a thousand dollars like your thousand dollars is gone for three years and then you'll get it back with the interest rate of the bond uh whereas gabe you brought up worthy and and they're doing something different right yeah they offer their bonds without any penalties for selling early or you know get you know if you if you put in a thousand dollars and then five months later you need a 500 of that for something you can take that 500 out uh no worries no fees and you'll still get all the interest that you earned on that in that time period. And that's I think that's really possible because they're able to have a really large user base. So, all right, say you it's it almost honestly it almost does sound a bit like a Ponzi scheme a bit, right? Where that all right, I need to put, I need to take out money so someone else puts in money, but uh it's more based on the idea of like almost like a stock market in that you're investing in this company and they're loaning your money out though to uh small businesses across america that's the difference between this and a ponzi scheme rather than just taking your money and handing it to someone else they're actually taking the money that you put in and loaning it out to small businesses who then once their loan is up you know they're paying it back with an interest rate 
Uh, and because of that, they're offer, able to offer you know high interest rate to you of 5%. I think I'd be interested. I think basically being able to withdraw almost makes it, it's like comforting. So you feel like there's less risk when you go in. And I would, I would imagine if all the users withdrew at the same time, that might cause a huge problem for Worthy. I mean, that's kind of what we saw um, with the, that was a great recession, right? Where um, everything collapsed and everyone wanted to like withdraw their money. Or- well, that was that was like the original the um, stock market collapse back in like the 1900s, yeah. the 1920s, I think. People wanted their, to and withdraw the their money and then they couldn't because everyone else wanted to withdraw. Whereas if no one had done anything, it might have been actually better in some cases. Hard to say, yes. hard to say. So I, I don't think that would ever happen. I think probably they have enough savings built up from their, er- you know, their earnings, their revenue that they keep enough in the bank that say... 90% of users wanted to withdraw money. I assume they'd be able to cover that either by getting loans out themselves or something. Uh, so it's not, that's the only thing though. It isn't backed up. You know, a bond is a risky asset, could potentially, you know, be worth nothing all of a sudden, but uh, Worthy seems like a pretty good company. Their head is actually, they have a female CEO who has a pretty good track record of working on different successful financial uh, ventures. So, yeah, check that out uh, if you're interested in, you know, I also like it because it's not just investing in Wall Street, right? Or a big bank like Goldman Sachs. It's this company that gives loans to small businesses. Yeah, you're like America. helping someone start their idea, bring their product to life, uh, yep. give them kind of a financial boost that they need to scale up, make jobs um, and and create something awesome. So it, it does feel kind of good to, to support them while also earning money and uh you know, I don't want to turn this into like an ad for Worthy Bonds, but I, I also really like their platform and what they're doing. And you can definitely consider looking into other bonds that are available uh, to help mitigate risk because bonds are typically, uh, it's like pretty high chance you'll get paid back um, without investing into something like the stock market, which is much more, uh, what's volatile? That's the word. It's yeah. like, I would say Worthy is closer to like a credit union than almost bonds. Sure. But yeah, that's a good. I would also, good. from a tech side, I would say their app, well, they don't really, they have an app, but it's more like a web app and it does leave a lot to be desired. It's a, it's definitely clunky. There's definitely, you run into hiccups where stuff doesn't scale right. The keyword pops up and covers too much of the screen, like stuff like that. So from a tech side, as far as user interface and usability, it's a little, it could use some improvement, but I'm assuming as they get more popular, uh, they'll dedicate more to that R and D there, and hopefully it'll just get better. So yeah, that's moving on though. The last, the last one. This is by far the most risky, um, and, and the most the stock market, and the most futuristic. No, yeah. and the most most futuristic tech related. You've obviously heard the buzzword cryptocurrencies thrown around a bunch. Whoa, yeah, right. Instantly, half the audience just left because I'm that guy at the party talking about how they should invest in Bitcoin. Yeah, cryptocurrency billionaire Gabe Shakur here, everybody. Gabe, share with us your deep insights. No, that that's no. There's I don't think that you should uh, go into Bitcoin, you know, when it was at its craze, you know, up to 20,000, there was all these stories of people making millions, and then there was the sad stories of people who, you know, like the house cleaner of, of this now Bitcoin millionaire put her $16,000 of savings, gave it to him to invest for her, and then literally three weeks later, it had almost halved Jeez. Uh, the Bitcoin market. It dropped from like 20000 to 10000 So it's really something you, you got to be careful. But um, the Virgin Galactic CEO, who I don't really know what his qualifications are other than being CEO of a pretty big company, uh, his, his recent, he was in a talk, he was saying that most people should have about 1% in cryptocurrencies just because it offers pretty good reward potentially. Uh, but yeah, don't put too much in. And so, but we've talked about cryptocurrencies a bit before. What is unique now and could potentially offer a more stable return in the super volatile market is this company called BlockFi. Uh, they're the one I'm talking about specifically, but basically it's companies offering cryptocurrencies loans. So kind of like Worthy where they're offering loans to small businesses. This is a company offering, offering like cryptocurrency loans to people, businesses, stuff like that. And it, it's a way to offset, like, say you can, you know, all right, buy some Bitcoin. You're just going to go up and down, up and down, up and down, you know, a ton. That's pretty much a guarantee. But with this company, uh, they actually will give you, I think right now it's 5%, but it's going down to like 4.6% in the future. Uh, so it's at least you're getting some interest or upward movement, possibly to offset any negative uh, downward movement. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And 
it's kind of you know cryptocurrency is still so new but uh sometimes the newer tech does have the uh like the interesting opportunities available with that and you definitely see this with companies that ipo i remember like tesla ipo'd and i was interested in them but i was also like in high school and and wasn't like into investing and didn't really understand that as well as i do now and they open for like 17 dollars and they are they hit like 700 dollars. so like huge opportunity uh when companies ipo come out onto the market and i think yes yeah i i know the big um at the end of the 2010 to 2020 decade there was a ton of stories out about the best investment in that decade would have actually been bitcoin because if you bought that back at its lowest in i think like 2010 or 2011 when it was basically like pennies for a single bitcoin and you just put a dollar in you would be a millionaire now unreal like basically unreal so. It's definitely risky investments uh, like Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. They are risky by their nature and you shouldn't put really, you should really put almost nothing in there. But if you have a little extra basically money that you can afford to gamble with and, you know, if you get nothing back, you won't be have any problems, then that's potentially something to do. And as I said, BlockFi is a way to make cryptocurrency investing a little more uh, stable, a little more assured that you aren't going to completely lose everything i think the one of the keys here that i want to emphasize is uh distributing your wealth over different asset classes is one way to help mitigate risk as some will go up and some will go down overall uh you hopefully want to be moving in a upward direction and definitely having so many different asset classes is one way to um hedge against a potential decline in any one of them and you can use for doing that. I know it gets sometimes really complicated having like, you know, five, six different accounts or, you know, where your money is. But you can use apps like I know I use Clarity. You use Mint Mobile or not. No, no, no. I Mint do Mobile use Mint company. Mobile, but that's a cell phone carrier. Sorry. I use, you use Mint by Intuit. By Intuit. Uh, and basically what those apps or websites allow you to do is link up your different services, whether it's your credit cards, uh, your banks, your, you know, investing platforms like Betterment, Robinhood, etc. And it then keeps track of all your money that you have, all the debt you have. And it's actually, they do some really smart stuff like, you know, if you credit card, right, if you use, uh, if you buy Starbucks on your credit card and it can keep track of like, oh, this is how much you spent on coffee this past month. Maybe you'd consider like decreasing that or something, you know. Right, so. right. Being more mindful of your budgeting. And uh, yeah, we really don't know where we're headed. It's kind of a, a big unknown uh, is life unfolds. But I think I think we've we've talked about uh, money a lot with this coronavirus impact. Yeah. The big thing they always say is you don't have like like the, bigger than wealth is your health. Yeah. Right. Uh, or your health, health is the is biggest. Your wealth. Yeah. They also actually okay. That's what they actually say. Sorry, <laughs> I was trying to hack together a cobbled cobbled like <laughs> saying, but you got it right. So take it over since you know where we're going. Yeah. So basically, with the coronavirus the biggest important factor is to stay healthy. And the number one tip is to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Um, Wait, is this a high-tech soap and water? Yeah, or? this is ultra high-tech. No, it's just regular soap and water. One interesting thing, though, that we were kind of re- talking about earlier and relating this to technology is you may actually want to uh, wash or disinfect your devices. I think your smartphone houses some of the most germs out of any single device in your household even worse than your bathroom, right? That's right. Yikes. Um, Here we go, here we go. scary. From a site that may or may not make a phone cleaning product, they say... Okay, this is sketchy. Your phone (laughs) is 18 times dirtier and contains more harmful bacteria than a public toilet. Not a private toilet, not your nice clean bathroom, but a public toilet, 18 times dirtier. Um, that's scary and i know i know mythbusters actually did a show where they tested stuff like this and how much germs and included on that list were also like keyboard mice um you know basically anything that you're touching continuously with your hands you might wash you wash your hands a ton right but then you go right back to your phone and oh wait that still has all the germs and yeah, stuff the germs on it like, that you're just trying oh, to get rid of a blank canvas let's just go and infect and inhabit this environment yeah um so i i would recommend uh considering cleaning your devices and the company i was reading this from was it's called phone soap and what it is is a uv sanitizer for your phone you just rest your phone in there it charges it up you can either get a wireless charging one or a wired one 
and it will also uh, blast it with UV rays to kill all of the germs and bacteria and other nasty stuff on your phone. So it is safe, clean, um, and ready to uh, basically become dirty again. But uh, yeah, I think that cleaning off surfaces and devices that you touch and use a lot is a great way to uh, help prevent uh, the spread of germs and, and keep everything clean. Yeah, I was going to say for pricing, it looks like they're what? like uh, I'm seeing eight, $80 bucks. for the um, one where you have to plug in with a wire and the wireless charging one is 100 bucks. Yeah, and they also have uh, the home soap, they call it. I'm just looking at this right now. And this is for all, you, you can put all your items in it, I guess it's saying. Like you can put, it looks like an iPad or something like that. Like it's a lot bigger. I would also say you can probably just use, I imagine what, like disinfecting wipes too would work better than nothing, you know, in a pinch, like uh, wiping down a keyboard or a mouse or something like that. Yeah, you definitely want to be careful that uh, it's not too moist though, because liquid damage is one of the big killers of laptops and, and technology devices. So um, something to be mindful oh, wait, of, but I shouldn't, you mean I shouldn't water cool my laptop uh, in no. a tub of water? Yeah, and you might want to take your iPad out of the dishwasher too. I'm not really oh, sure what that's no. doing there. I was trying to clean it. <laughs> didn't want to get the coronavirus. It's so easy. You just run the cycle once yeah. on auto and you're done. And actually, that, honestly, that fits really nicely. Yeah, it would though. just stack right, right up with the all the plates, right behind the cutting board. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that's, yeah, there's not much other tech stuff out there I know that keep you healthy. I mean, I know people are rushing out getting, you know, face masks, getting uh, all sorts of things. But really, the simplest thing is, as the health officials have been stressing, unfortunately, not very tech related, but washing your hands. How could how could we make that tech related? Like setting yourself a reminder. Oh, could oh, they oh. make an app that like okay. lets you know after you touch someone or a public surface? <laughs> it's I here's what I would consider. Um, what you could consider doing is using like contactless payments. Then you have to interact with the machine less, so you're just holding your own phone. Okay. Right, that's one yeah. way. Um, yeah, you don't thing, have to touch the keypad. Right. Yeah, you just hopefully. unlock your phone with your, your face, your fingerprint, and then you whoop, hold it up wirelessly and make your payment. Uh, that could be great. Also for traveling and airport passes and things like that. And, and that'd be not using money too. Yeah. 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 That's a good money is very germ ridden. Um, <laughs> the other thing is uh, my friends have automatic soap dispensers, which are really nice. That's not really tech related. I guess it has a battery yeah. so that, you know, that's tech related, but yeah, um, it, it counts ding ding uh and it you know put your hand underneath it and it sh shoots out and i get a lot of satisfaction from using it um i don't know those those are kind of the tech items i have i'm not what what do you think Gabe? are there other ways we can add some electricity to this uh well i was thinking i was thinking someone needs to come up with a smartphone or smart watch app right that okay can detect the detect the movements of washing your hands and then remind you when you haven't washed your hands for a while, possibly. Ooh, that's a very interesting idea. I feel like that's right? like um, like the stand goal, but instead of standing, washing your hands. Or what if it? What if it could also detect like common movements, or like you know, like for example, shaking hands with someone, or uh, you know, touching a keypad on something. Like it could, they could, you know, learn it to teach it to recognize different common movements associated with times when you'd interact with your environment. And then afterwards, it could remind you to wash your hands. I <laughs> just imagine like uh, a new employee getting onboarded or something like that, just going around shaking everyone's hand, just ping, 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 ping. Remember to it's saying it's it, the watch is like saying, "Get rid of me now, quickly! I don't want to be infected." You're by <laughs> <laughs> this person guaranteed. Are you, infected. are you still alive even now? You've shaken so many hands. I almost feel yeah, like uh, going back to the ancient times, setting a timer or something, depending on I don't know, depending on what your work is and what you're doing, but. Yeah, I think that's that's basically all I have. Do you have Do you have anything else? I mean, no, no that's I mean, let's just hope. Uh, you know, I I think you sent me there was a site that tracks the current spread of the virus, right? I did send that very awesome was, site. Do we know what it is? It was like a, it was a GIS site, right? Yeah, it was right. awesome. I don't know exactly. We'll we'll try to put it down in the show notes in the description. But it was it's kind of cool uh, to look at how this virus was spreading around the world. A little surreal and kind of like that game, isn't there? Like a there's game, a, yeah, like there's an excellent board game. Oh, oh, you might be thinking of the uh, more tech savvy mobile, mobile yeah. game that was actually banned in China. All right, two games, one board game, <laughs> Pandemic, fabulous game. Go recommend you play it. The game is the virus, and you are trying to cure the virus, which is what we're doing now. 
Uh, the yeah. other game is Plague Inc. It was actually banned in China, um, and you are trying to create a virus that will cause a pandemic. Uh, so that is Plague yeah, that, Inc. Let's let's not do that one. And right uh, that and pandemic. Weird. So yeah, a little too real. I so. I think that's gonna be it. Thank you guys yeah. so much for listening. You can find the Pinch to Zoom podcast on Twitter at Pinch to Zoom Pod, Instagram at Pinch to Zoom Podcast, email us Pinch to Zoom Podcast at gmail.com. And yeah, I'm Stetson. I'm Gabe. And we look forward to talking to you in the next episode. And of course, Gabe's Go Review. So stay tuned for that. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you next time. Stay healthy. Hey, but actually, you know a good sh- oh, oh, I actually oh, like to we'll use talk my at the computer. same time. <laughs> That's what people love. I actually, people like listening to podcasts to listen to people talk at exactly the same time and not listen to each other. It reminds me of home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, took a, that took a hot second to say it. Oh, my God. <laughs>